Hi, and welcome to Allen High School's discussion of chemistry at the AP IBHL level. We're going to continue our discussion of gases by zeroing in on Dalton's law. Um, there are basically like three variations of a theme that we will cover with Dalton's law, and two of them you saw and did calculations with in pre-AP chemistry. So hopefully there's some familiarity. I'm not saying you might, you know, I'm not saying you'll remember it all, but there should be familiarity as I go over them again. At the heart of Dalton's law is this statement that the total pressure of a system is equal to the simple sum of all the different pressures. For example, the barometric pressure in the air is equal to the pressure exerted by nitrogen plus oxygen plus water vapor, plus CO2, plus argon, and so forth. It's equal to this simple sum. And what this example is showing you is I have a pressure of hydrogen, and I have a pressure of helium, and as long as we keep the systems at the same volume and temperature, right? Because if I change volume and temperature, I'm changing those pressures, okay? so. If I do that, when I put them into a container together, the hydrogen has no idea that the helium's present. It's not like hydrogen's like, oh, I'm in a container with helium and I've got to hit the walls harder to impress helium. No. These gases, remember, sense no intermolecular forces. So we're still talking in an ideal situation. So if this was 2.9, as is in your picture, plus 7.2, we get a total pressure of 10.1 atmospheres, a simple sum. All right. Now, let's say, for example, that you were given this information only, not the two, dot, two beakers or you know the two things next to it. Those aren't present. Let's say you have just this. And the question is, what is my partial pressure of, of hydrogen? So to go backwards, we would use this formula. All right, and that partial, this means partial pressure. So that's the partial pressure of A. The X means mole fraction. A fraction is a part over the whole. And since it's a mole fraction, it's the part of the moles over all of the moles. We're introducing a new concentration unit, and you need to know that. All right? So if I want to know the pressure of hydrogen, my first step is to get the mole fraction of hydrogen. Well, if we look at our picture, we see we have 0 0.60 moles of hydrogen. So our part is 0 0.60. Our whole is the sum of the two. I have 0 0.60 moles of hydrogen plus uh, 1.50 moles of helium. Okay, so it's just the part over the whole. And if you do that algebra, I get 0 0.286. This is unitless because it's moles over moles. Okay, now we could get the moles of helium pretty readily because a fraction is out of one. Right, a percent is out of 100, a fraction's out of 1. So my mole fraction of helium would be 1 minus 0 0.286, and that's going to equal 0 0.714. Okay, so now, what if I wanted to know my partial pressure of hydrogen? What we would do next is plug into the formula, now that we know the mole fractions, so my partial pressure of hydrogen, I did helium, sorry about that. My partial pressure of hydrogen is going to equal my mole fraction of hydrogen, 0 0.286 times the total pressure. That was given in that little segment of the picture as 10.1. And if we did this, indeed, we should get 2.9 atmospheres. Okay, so that shows going forward when you add them together and then backwards how to get each individual uh, partial pressure. 
Now, a specialized application of this is how we collect a gas, especially if it's a colorless gas, because the question is, is if we have a, a tube and we want to collect the gas, if it's just an empty tube, how do we know when it's full? How do we know when we've driven out all of the air? Right, we, we won't know that if it's a colorless gas. So what we do instead is you fill this completely full with water. So if we fill the test tube completely full with water, we know there's no air present. Okay, so you want it completely full. And then we submerge that, or actually what I would do is I'd fill it underwater and then flip it over. Okay, And here, this just shows a reaction producing a gas. So our gas is going to go through the tubing under here, and it's going to bubble up. Okay, And as it bubbles up, since the gas is less dense than the water, it's going to displace the water. So we're collecting a gas by displacement of the water. Okay, Now what we can do is we can read the volume of the collected gas. So that's how we could get a volume of the gas. And we will have an experiment where you'll, you will determine how to get your other uh, properties if we want to do calculations. But here's the deal. Whenever you have a closed container with a liquid in it, you always have a vapor pressure above that liquid. So if we have water here, right away, since it's a closed container, we're going to have well, really in any container, the vapor pressure of water. In a closed container, it can't escape, okay? So what happens is in this collected gas, right, we're going to have the pressure of our collected gas, but we're also going to have our vapor pressure of our water. So any way that we measure the pressure, we have our pressure of our gas and our pressure of our water. It's just getting pretty messy, so let me clear the screen so we can focus in on this. So, you will measure this. This is what you'll want to put into some sort of gas law. So the question is, how do we find this? Well, to find this, you're going to look on a table. Somebody's done a lot of experiments and measured tables where you have temperature versus the vapor pressure. Because as you increase temperature, you're going to increase the moles of gas and you're going to increase the vapor pressure. So temperature and vapor pressure are directly proportional. So you'll find tables. You look up your temperature and you'll get your value of your vapor pressure of water from that. Or it'll be given in you know the context of the question. Now in the lab, in the back of the room by my back door, so if you go to the the back door going out into the hallway, you're going to find a barometer which is a very valuable piece of equipment and you'll see that chart tacked to the wall. Okay, So you'll need that information when you do the experiment that we're going to be doing for this unit. All right. Well, that's it for Dalton's Law. We're going to move on to the ideal gas law. So until then, this is signing off. Love you, kiddos.